ladies and gents. My name is Dr. Callum Watson. I'm a fellow of the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the uh, significance and the legacy of Robert Bruce. Bruce really is, without a doubt, one of the most important um, individuals in late medieval Scottish history. His reign shaped the course of Scottish history during the 14th and 15th centuries, and this has consequences that resonate right down to the present day. As a war leader, for example, his policy of caution in strategy and boldness in tactics uh, provided a template for his successes in how to successfully defend the realm against its opponents. Throughout the 14th and 15th centuries, Scotland's most successful and uh, effective war leaders would, like Bruce, avoid pitched battles, fight only on their own terms, and look for inventive and unexpected ways of achieving their aims. Conversely, of course, Scotland's least successful medieval war leaders tended to ignore the model that Bruce had provided. Uh, it's for precisely this reason that in the 1370s, when tensions were once again mounting between Scotland and England, uh, that the Scots looked back to Bruce's reign for inspiration uh, in how to conduct the war that they knew was coming. It's in this period, of course, that John Barber, the Archdeacon of Aberdeen, wrote his famous poetic celebration of King Robert's life and career known as the Bruce. Uh, as, a, as a consequence of his victory at the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314, uh, he was also able to rebuild the Scottish political community really as he saw fit. Uh, this meant driving out some families and individuals who uh, refused to recognise him as the rightful King of Scots, uh, but also raising up other families and other individuals who uh, either had supported him from the start or had been particularly useful to him uh, in his ongoing struggle to have his, his rights as king recognised. Uh, the main beneficiaries of this process, uh, probably most notably the Douglases and the Stuarts, would go on to be key players in shaping Scottish society and Scottish politics in the 14th and 15th centuries. As late as the 1440s, uh, it, for example, in the Book of the Hulet, uh, the Black Douglases still pointed to the faithful service of their ancestor, the good Sir James. Um, the faithful service, of course, that he had provided to Bruce in his uh, war. The, the, the Black Douglases looked at this as one of the foundational moments in their family history. They even still emphasised the importance of what they called the bloody heart of Bruce, which they bore on their heraldic achievement. Perhaps most significantly, Bruce's resettlement of the kingdom after 1314 tied the fortunes of the leading magnates of Scotland to those of Bruce and his successors. If Bruce's descendants were replaced as kings by, say, their rivals, the Balliols, or if they were overthrown altogether by the English, uh, then the titles, the lands, and the rights that Bruce had bestowed on his followers, uh, they might well disappear as well. That meant that for the most part, uh, in the two centuries or so after Bruce's death, the issue of Scottish independence remained so vitally important to the Scottish political community. Uh, that had a profound influence on Scotland's medieval culture, its literature, its art, its foreign policy, its diplomatic policy, even its social conventions. In that sense, then, uh, Bruce set the tone for Scotland's late medieval history. And this, I think, is why he remains of such great interest uh, to so many of us today. Thank you for listening, ladies and gents. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that and found it interesting, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the day.